Good morning once again and welcome back to New Day. It is now time for our health segment, which is proudly brought to you by Lipton Tea, inspiration flowing from nature. Now today in our health segment, we'll be talking about food and energy metabolism. And this is basically um, how the food we eat is broken down to yield energy. And to help me break down this subject is um, Dr. Borte. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Sandra. It's good to see you again. Good to see our you too. own in-house doc. Yeah. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing well, okay. very well. So please tell us, what is food and energy metabolism? Well, I might say that um, this topic is a very technical one, and uh, I'll try as much as possible to and make quite it... quite broad, isn't it? Very broad. Try as much as possible to make it simple, not to be too technical, but forgive me if I still go technical. Metabolism basically talking about all the chemical reactions that go on in our body, in our cells, that will keep the human cell and tissue, and therefore the living organism itself alive. If metabolism should break down, it means that a lot of degenerative processes are going to, are going to go on, and the cells would also be dying off. Now, I must say that when we are eating food, food is not the fuel that the body needs, as in food. It's just like having crude oil from, from, the, from the sea. Right. You know, have to refine it. It has to be refined, and then different components can be used for different um, 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 different, things. different things. But you realize that the end product is the same. So you take the crude oil, you're able to get gas from it, you're able to get petrol from it, you get kerosene, kerosene. from it. Now, you cannot put your egg in kerosene and then it boils and gets, gives you a, um, a boiled egg. You cannot put your, your food just on top of um, petrol and then you get your food cooked. The, the, something must happen to the petrol for it to be able to cook your food. Oh. So in the same way, you eat the food into your body, your body has to digest it into the kind of fuels that the body mm. can use. Oh, okay. So you take in, the main um, food sources we have are the carbohydrates, the fats, and, and proteins. The body doesn't need the carbohydrate, like in the starch that you are taking, the body doesn't need it directly. The body cannot utilize it. The fats that you are taking, the body cannot utilize it directly. So fats, for example, are going to be broken down by your digestive system into fatty acids and glycerol. And that is what the body needs. That's what the body can use. Even right. then, to, for, for your energy, you can use that for its energy. The, the carbohydrates will be broken down from the starch to the, um, what we call the disaccharides, then to the monosaccharides, the glucose. So where the final um, product of um, carbohydrate di digestion becomes the glucose that the body can then use to produce energy. Proteins will be digested into amino acids eventually. Now, what happens is that the body needs protein. What do you need protein for? Protein to build up your body tissues again. Everything about you, your hair, your skin, everything is, is protein. Your DNA, your RNA, everything is protein. So when we talk about metabolism, it's a breakdown and also a build-up. So the body breaks down into what I can use to build up. So then we have metabolism being broken down into catabolism, which is the breaking down. You catalyze it, break it down, and then when the the subunits are obtained, the amino acids are gotten, the glucose is gotten, the, the um, fatty acids are gotten, then the body can use it to build the necessary things that uh, the body needs. So that if you're having so much of fat in your system, you eat a lot of fat, the body breaks down into fatty acids and glycerol. But this fatty acids will be working about in quotes, working about in your system. Some can be used. The excess that is not used gets stored somewhere 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 in, it has to find a place to be to, 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 to hide and they, they hide in what we call the adipose tissues the fat cells called the adipose tissues so that you start building up weight and and i, I would now so tell it's it, the excess one that makes people gain it's weight the excess, or it's the excess because the body ah, is not using it. all that you are putting in mm. so then your adipose tissues on your tummy your thighs and other parts of your body they get bigger and bigger with fat so you see somebody with a, a, a should I say a chubby stomach? Or uh, a chubby bit heavy belly. around the middle. You go into surgery and you cut through, and you cut through about this thick of yellow fat before you get even to the abdominal wall. So that is all unwanted. Uh, it's unwanted yellow. Fat. It's when you open the human, it's yellow fat thick before you get to the abdominal wall, even to cut into the abdomen. So the, I, I would say that this person is adiposely well disposed. <laughs> <laughs> I won't call the person. Maybe they use the word fat, you know, people don't like no, it. No, not at all. That is adipose tissue. So the carbohydrates also would end up being getting into glucose, and then the body begins to use glucose. The, the, the amount of energy that is produced from metabolism is, is enormous. 
you think that we walk about, we move, go to place, everything, we use a lot of energy. But what we don't know is that our metabolism has got to do with more of what we call the basal metabolic rate, your BMR. When you are asleep, when you are walking, when I'm talking, there are a lot of involuntary things my body is doing that I don't even control. So that, where is that energy coming from? I do this, as I'm, I'm using my skeletal muscle, I'm, I'm consciously trying to lift something. It's daily activity, I, I pull things. That is. But, um, doctor, let me just cut in. Is the energy derived from just food? Or there are other things that the metabolism thing? Yeah, the, the energy is derived from food. That is the original thing. It breaks down to this. There's um, no other way of deriving the energy apart from food. No, apart from food, and then your the food will break down into glucose. Right. So the glucose they enter cycles. I mean, there are so many chemical cycles in the body. So all these fat and uh, proteins and they end up in something called the acetyl CoA. Right. It's an, a coenzyme A, and then it goes into other cycles, citric acid cycle, then what we call the electron transport chain. That is where the energy is generated from. Okay. So how exactly does the food facilitate metabolism? All these foods that we are talking about. Yeah, so you realize that, well, when you, and uh, uh, a good way to look at it is that with somebody who is fat, let's say somebody who is overweight, has a lot of stores of fat in the person, and so the person sh- then shouldn't go hungry. <laughs> okay. But then you can be overweight, and yet sometimes you starve, you feel like you're hungry. Right. That means that the body's energy expenditure and demand work in a special, is a certain way. As soon as you are hungry, you feel the, 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 that kind of sensation. Signals are sent. You feel that I'm hungry. Now, if you satisfy that hunger with, with food, it will break down into the glucose. Glucose is the most available energy. That one, it doesn't really get stored. It gets stored in the liver and then, then the muscle. But the, quickly, the, the, the quickest way of body using energy is glucose. So you can't, that's why sometimes you're hungry, just get glucose and brrr into your mouth and then you feel energetic okay. all of a sudden because okay. it's the quickest way to get energy into the body. Okay. The body directly uses it. Okay. But if you should eat kinky, that's carbohydrates, like, 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 like starch, it will take time to digest. So the glucose does it very quickly. Okay. Now, um, having, having gotten this, Eventually, everything goes into the same um, attack way into the, the, the electron transport to produce energy. So that what happens is that if you are, you are chubby, you are big, you are, um, and then you feel hungry, if you don't satisfy the hunger with food, what happens is that the body then relies on the stored fat, the stored glucose, which in the form of glycogen, and breaks them down back into sure. glucose for the body to use. That's why somebody can fast for one week and say I'm doing dry fasting and they still don't die. Okay. That's why you can have people um, going a whole week without food and they still don't die. I mean, it has to go. It can even survive a month without food. What is going to happen, you realize that the person starts losing weight. Why is the person losing weight? It's because now the body is now relying on the stored fats, stored mm. um, uh, things in the body, now breaking them down back into glucose for the body to mm-hmm. use. So that's the metabolism. Breaks down store some of it in the time that you you need um glucose and it is not available directly the body will go into what we call the gluconeogenesis glucose new production or new beginning you can do gluconeogenesis or um glycolysis you break down your 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 glucose to into energy lice uh, break the glucose to produce energy so it's a whole system of cycles that the body really um sensitizes itself and knows what to fall on at what time, what to use at what time. So even if you are starving, you can fast for a day and you won't die. Wow, very, but, very fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Now, what are some of the foods that are good for um, energy metabolism? Well, I mean... So good. Good. So we are looking at carbohydrates, we are looking at proteins, we are looking at fats. These are the main sources mm-hmm. where you can get your, your stuff from. But then we have healthy carbohydrates, we have bad carbohydrates. We have healthy, healthy fats and have bad fats. We have healthy protein and then also bad protein. I mean, plants. Please give us examples of a few examples. of them so I'll that we know example. what the if you, good if you ones take, are. If you take carbohydrates, for example, you are looking at things like rice, good carbohydrates, and um, wheat, good carbohydrates, macaroni. White rice or brown rice? Ah, I would go for brown rice. Okay, you know. but white wheat, rice is also wheat is even better than than white yeah, rice. Yeah. Okay. So macaroni and uh, and the like. If you go to protein, um. The what about our kinkies and bankus and fufus? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, also, they're all good. They're all good. Fats. I mean, they are good. Good carbohydrates. Good carbohydrates. A point is not to be taking excess of it. Okay. 
I have I've, I've maintained that our problem is taking excess of, of it. Everything I mean, in moderation. Yes, everything in moderation. You don't need to eat so big a meal at once. Rather eat small, small meals portions at shorter intervals. So that that's what I do, and my friends think I like food. But that's what I do. I really I can eat like maybe half a bowl of cake. It's better, so you maintain your. And then they'll be eating like yeah. two, and then but two or three hours later, I'm hungry and I have to eat something else yeah, again, something, something little. little. Yeah. You know, like you like food, you're always eating. But the thing is, I eat very small portions, it's but good. I eat a lot, maybe four or five small meals it's, in a it's day. It's better than eating a whole meal, big meal. Now, what the, the body the body uses just a little bit of it to for its basal metabolic rate. Like your 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 kidneys. I mean, about eighty liters of blood runs through your kidneys in a day. Eighty liters of blood. I mean, where does that energy come from? As we talk, we are we are breathing. I don't know how my ribs are moving up. You don't know how, you, but some energy must be need, is needed to make your breath go up and down. Your heart is pumping blood. Where does that energy come from? All these things are in the basal metabolic rate. When you are asleep, your brain is still working. The brain uses basically glucose. So that when your glucose levels should go down, you can just go unconscious because the, bla- the brain usually uses only glucose as, as, as its uh, fuel. Um, okay, so all our crap. foods, bankers, and all those things are good they carbohydrates, are all, but they are good if carb- taken in yes, moderation. In taking okay. the, the amount involved. Um, protein? So we have protein, we are looking at eggs eggs is the one of the best sources of protein okay but how often should we be eating the eggs because i would say maybe mm, once a day once a know, day one, once a day what no about cholesterol one. cholesterol is, is is also the other thing about eggs when you are eating egg is a source of protein so it's okay to have an egg a day an egg a day is okay what about two or three some no, people it's, like it's it it's bad <laughs> okay it's, it's really, and and again I'll, I'll, I'll stay on this platform that we are having too many cases of young people nowadays dying from heart diseases. And, and it's becoming alarming. Um, some of you hear on news because you know, they are celebrities. But it's happening all over the place. And it's because, I always say that you would look like what you are putting into your body. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. I mean, if, if you decide to put in too much sugar into your body, the, your body can work on the sugar. But some people get these metabolic diseases, um, diabetes and insulin deficiencies and all that. They cannot um, metabolize um, shu- um, glucose Break it or down sugar well. very well. Mm. These things are things that we need to be aware that whatever becomes of you is about what you are putting into your body. Okay. That if your body can be that of a baby, I mean, having all the the nutrients in their right quantities as 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 you were born. Oh, the be, world would be, be such be a so better nice. place. But it? then what happens? We put in things into the body, right. and it changes us. Okay. I mean, so an egg a day is fine. What other proteins? Good proteins. You have the soya eat. protein is good. I mean, if you have uh, protein so from soy, soy, soy milk, soy beans, yeah, all those things are good. It's good. good. Okay. It's good too. You can have protein, uh, soy milk, and uh, milk itself also contains good amount of protein. You just need to be careful of um, how much, of how much you, you are eating like you somebody cooks food and soup you have um, a lot of oil on the surface of the food um, or the soup like palm nut soup, palm nut soup, or or nut soup. soup. and then we also fry um, fish with another type of oil and put it in the, the same soup. thing we are too, putting too much oils in our foods you could just um, take off the oil on the surface of the soup and use that to fry, fry the your, fish. You know, we have a lot of misconception. I remember back in the medical school when my mom used to bring me food every weekend. So when I studied about this, I told her, if you ever bring me my, <laughs> I like my okra to you, if you Ooh. ever bring it and there's oil on it, I won't take it again. So I, I, it was an instruction I gave at home. So now they cook and they always take off the oil mm. from the top. I mean, it's, it's, it's healthier. It's not about the aesthetic value of what you eat is so it's looking so red and, and you think we are eating it's it's bad eating bad eating habit. It's bad. Your body can metabolize a certain amount. The rest will be stored some way somehow. And if the storage happens to be in the form of cholesterol or fatty things that um, eventually block the lumen of your um, arteries, arteries then this kind of heart attack coming, this kind of um strokes coming because the um the blood cannot now move through there because it's blocked. Okay, so, so it cannot supply your heart. It cannot so supply so you've your talked brain. about the good carbohydrates, the good proteins. Which other good ones should we be eating? Um, fat. <laughs> As for fat, I, I don't even want to Is talk there anything about like good fat? <laughs> 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 fatty acids, right? That's a lot. No, the, 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 the fat, you get a fatty acids from the fat. Right. So you have animal fat and plant fat. Okay. Um, we usually would not go more into animal 
fat that much. It's better to eat. You see, plants, as you eat plant products, they also contain some amount of fat. That's what you need to know. There are some um, proteins that the body synthesizes. There's some, um, sorry, some amino acids that the body can synthesize. There are some it cannot synthesize. So we have the, the one you cannot say, we call them the essential amino acids. So these, you may need to get them from other sources in your food, like lysine, tryptophan, etc. But the fat, when you are eating fat, you know, you know, like the kind of, <laughs> I don't want to Just give us some examples that so that, you know, we, 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 mu- we do need the fat. We yeah. must eat the you fat. Need, but but it, need it depends on what kind of fat we eat. So what, give us an example. It. Give us some examples of the kind of fats we should be eating. If you be eating butter, you, you toast, have butter, you have margarine. Should, okay. Again, you don't over spread butter in your in your bread. Okay. So much of it. Cooking oils. Cooking. Do we go for the vegetables? Do we go Vegetable, for the yeah. yes or olive oil? Some people like olive. Is the best one of olive is one of the best. But in terms of oil, the best of all is cooking and um, coconut oil. Coconut oil is the best. Okay, it smells very nice actually. Yeah. Okay, so coconut oil. What yeah. other fats? Um. Yeah, I think there's the whole range of other sources of fats, but I don't really want to talk Going about. It. Just be careful. Just of be careful of the amount of the fats that you're fat taking. In. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Sometimes the fat even goes to sit around your liver. They call it fatty liver. Wow. <laughs> and all kinds of things in the body. It's, it's, it's a discipline and a decision to keep your weight trim, keep your weight down. I had to do that myself. So, Doc, now how much food should we be taking for good metabolism, for good energy metabolism? Um, I know you said everything of, in moderation, yeah, but let's say for a meal. Food, mm. as for a meal, if all your meal, I, we come back to the same size again. And it, it's not like it's a joke. I mean, food, if you put everything together, it's about the size of your fist. It's fine. It's fine. And again, it ensures that your meal has more of colors mm. than just white. Like, you colors. know, yeah. You, so you have leaves, you have carrots, you have different colors. These carrots are kind of. Um, Orange, Orange reddish, yes. it contains Maybe vitamin have green A, green lettuce or yeah. cabbage. It contains carotene, vitamin A. You have some greens, you have some lettuce. You have these things. Okay, are these, okay. Let's talk about the local foods too. <laughs> if you're going yeah. according to colors, exactly. If I'm but having banku and okra exactly. stew, is that so colorful for, enough? For the, yeah, I mean, because banku is white. I've got my red oil. Good. I've got my green. Then again, okra. I'm saying that. Then again, I'm saying that your banku shouldn't be. You should have some amount of fat in it. It shouldn't be so big a banku. Right. And then what you have um, by the side is some pepper. Okay, that's red. That's that could red. be black. Well, colorful. But, but that is all that there is. And the banku is compared the size <laughs> of the banku to the pepper right. or what else is there. Sometimes just a little fish. And in our local parlance, we say that I, I, I like to eat the, the one <laughs> the, with the the, 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 star, the carbohydrates. The starch, yeah. Yeah, that's what okay. we think we want. Right. Now, when, when you take in all the starch, the body usually would say that anytime you're hungry, then I'll be using the, the starch. I'll be breaking down the fat and uh, the starch. What is going to happen is that once your body is always breaking down the fat to use, because you're always putting in there, your fats cannot be broken down. Right. Your fat will be just be always being stored. So somebody will be saying, I'm not eating okay. fat. Doc, this is such an interesting topic that we want to pick a few phone calls. So just to let the viewers know that the numbers are up on the screen, just um, call in and share your experiences um, with regards to this topic. Yeah. Please go on. So your, your your fat will be still be stored and your carbohydrates, once you put in the carb, like your clips, it, the, the, we already have our first caller. <laughs> Good morning, Bismarck, Good all the way from La Paz. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead with your contribution. Uh, I like what the fact that you know, so it is good. We don't eat too much food, so we can maintain our energy, food metabolism, and I can to try. Um, could you say that again, please, Bismarck? I, we didn't quite get that. I said, I really like what the doctor is saying. Some of us, we think we're eating too much food, and also we feel like that's what we feel like eating, but I think it's a wrong the wrong thing for us to do. And I like what the doctor is saying. And as I'm going to stick to what he is saying now, we are going to do that as well. Okay, thank you very much, Bismarck. Thank you very much for that. Okay, he likes what you're saying. Yeah. He's very so, happy about as long as time is, I, I, I said it last time that um, comparatively, Younger people are becoming wealthier than our parents at, at their ages when they were our ages. Wealthier, then, wealthier. I'm telling okay. you, it's true. In terms of in um, terms of wealth, economically, of economically. Okay. Young executives. I right. mean, so we are get we get so stressed. We just pick anything to drink. We just pick anything to eat, and you think that the money that I can afford it. So, so we just, just buy basically anything. bad bad eating it's habit. Bad eating habit. Okay. I mean, somebody was saying that back then, heart attacks and these things. You hear them in the age of sixties. 
Yeah. Very, very. But now, you know, obesity is all over the place. We are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And once you are putting on weight and um, the fat on the your middle. belly, just know that it's also happening inside your, your blood body. vessels. You I mean, are what she is, like yeah. you said earlier. Okay, we've got um, Evans on the line. Good morning, Evans. Good morning. Please go ahead with your contribution. Um, in the process, okay. Okay. Um, look, um, you know, people really want to satisfy their hunger. You get it? But considering the fact that this will really affect their health in several areas, how can we really combine being able to satisfy your hunger and then ensuring that you also look after yourself? Because, you know, getting really sizable food will not really help you, as you're saying, because they will store excess fat and then the body will be using up the carbohydrates, leaving the fat and also how do we combine them? Okay, doctor, I hope you got that. Yeah. I think he's more concerned about the, the portions that we're talking about. Yes. You want to satisfy you see, your hunger, but you at the same time, the, the, you truth, the truth of the matter food. is that when you're hungry, when you're starved, just watch it. When you're starved, the temptation is also to get food yes. to eat. But try this. Drink water. Drink a large volume of water. And water is a very important um, 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 fluid in the body. Drink water. You realize that you are full for some time. It keeps your hunger away for another hour or two. So by the time you get that food, you'll be able to cut down exactly. the amount of Exactly. You realize that by even you. drinking water more, I'm not saying go and drink sugary stuff. You go and just drink fluids that are so much sugar. Just water. Just, Plain, just drink water. You realize that it pushes water. the hunger away for an hour or two. And by the time you get that food, you won't eat as much exactly. as you would have. Exactly. You realize that you would have eaten so time. much as you would have um, wanted. So uh, a way of cutting down your hunger is to give your body, you can even give your body water for okay. some time. And it helps. And um, again, it's also a decision to be aware of the fact that I am directly responsible for what I put in my body. You can decide that I'm taking this portion. I went for a program over the um, last week, and we're doing medical screening. In the morning, they brought, me, they brought me a bottle of malt. I took it. After two hours, the lady brought me a, a bottle of soft drink. Okay. And I said, no. Oh, I mean, we've got I another call water. on the line. Um, Ekia, good morning, Ekia. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. How, how are you this morning, Akia? Um, please, I wanted to ask something. I have a friend who is very fat and she is trying to do exercise and also combine the whole lot of things just to lose the fat that we are talking about. And sometimes she uses lime and certain herbs and all that. So I want to ask the doctor, is it really advisable that she uses all these things to burn the fat in addition to the exercise she's doing? Okay, thank you very much, Akia. When it comes to weight loss, I... I, I'm becoming an expert in it. I, I, but I had to lose like 10 kilos. You said yourself that you yeah, used to be a I've bit I've lost heavy. 10 kilos in, in 17 How months. did you do it? I used nutrition. Okay. Now, nutrition is 80% of it, and exercise is 20% of it. And again, I would say to people that the fight against weight loss, the fight against high cholesterol, the fight against hypertension, all these things, is a perpetual fight. Nobody should ever think that um, I'm going to take some medicine to lose weight in one month, and then, and then that's after it. That, after that's that, I'm going to eat all the things I'm not supposed to eat. You grow big again. If I should, I should stop my nutrition now, it's likely I'll put on weight again. So it's a I'll lifestyle. Go. It's because something that you It's a lifestyle. Yeah. At the end of the day, whenever, whenever you are hungry, the temptation is, if you're not doing good nutrition, you will still go and take something to eat. So whenever you're hungry, why don't you just stick to the good nutrition? The exercise for your friend is extremely important. You can still go out and exercise and burn some fat. But then again, you can be doing all that and yet go and eat all the wrong things at, at, at the end of the day. So make sure that you either spoke to your dietitian to specifically tell you what, what you to have eat. in your diet right. that will help you to maintain your weight. Okay, she, I think she also mentioned lime. I think she meant lemon. You know, yeah. some people like to yeah, drink yeah. that lemon, well, thinking that, that it burns down fat. That's, that's the notion that um, lime uh, burns down the fat. I, I don't know what scientific evidence there is, but sometimes you don't so always is, is use that, it. Is that notion wrong? Because I've read that in a lot of magazines. Yeah, I mean, so um, sometimes you know, need science, but when the evidence is there physically, I mean, I'd say it's, it's something that is all over the place. And I, I, I use my tea that is, has lime flavor in it. It also helps me burn my fat. And my, so that one, I would say that yes, it's good. It's you can good. have the lime in the water. Okay. And then there are some other um, berry teas that have lime Lem in it. Or lemon oil. Lime or lemon okay. in it. It helps. Uh, we've got Ekia on the phone. Good morning, Ekia. Evelyn, I'm sorry. Evelyn. Good morning, Evelyn. Good, 
good morning. Please but don't. Me say me doctor. Me want me to me doctor. I did to make me. They say me who I declare a Okay, Evelyn. Me say we a doctor. How answer question. Basically, she she wants to know she she can't sleep. She goes to bed at night and she stays up the whole night till the morning. She wants to know what is wrong with her. I don't know if this is a diet <laughs> issue. Though, no, it is not necessarily connected to diet. We must see her, talk to her, find out what there is. I mean, people may not be able to sleep for all kinds of reasons. It may be organic, it may be pathological. Sometimes it's not pathological. Some anxiety, some stresses may not help, it may not be going through a lot of challenges. So she has social. To see a doctor. Yeah, so okay. she needs to sit and talk to somebody. Okay. And then when their cause is found, it can be dealt with. Okay. Evelyn, I'm uh, um, Dr. Anya Shio said the uh, problem is that uh, the doctor is not going to be able to sleep. He's going to be able to sleep. He's going to be able to sleep. I think we have Margaret. Good morning, Margaret. Uh, uh, please, I want to ask something about this egg. Uh, she's talking about eggs. I, I beg your pardon, say that again. There are a lot of cholesterol in X, and I don't normally eat X too much. So I want, I want him to educate us more about the X thing. Okay, she's talking about the eggs. I was a bit um, interested in that as well. You know, we've heard so much about eggs and how um, taking a lot of eggs will lead to high cholesterol and all, all of that. So people, some people even say maybe two or three eggs in a week. So I'm sure that um, uh, Margaret's concern as well. She wants to know a bit more about the egg situation. How much of it should be, we be eating? How often should we be taking in the eggs? Yeah, so we think that um, basically um, maximum one egg a day. Don't go beyond that. If you want to, so do you can it, eat an egg every day, I'm but just one. One. If you have to do it every day, then one. Personally, I won't say that I do it every day. But we can you that do if fried egg every day, or fried should you, you again, know, alternate boiled, boiled fried, boiled better. poached? Boiled better, definitely, okay. because fried egg you have um, protein in it. I think again, egg is one of the best sources of protein. Okay. Yet also, it can uh, be um, a means of having very high cholesterol levels. Okay. So you can get your protein from it. But be, be very careful. It, it doesn't have to be every day. Do maximum. If you are that kind of person, you want to eat it, then it should, it should be maximum. Okay, so if you want to eat more than one, then how often should you be eating the eggs? If you want to eat maybe fry two or three eggs. Don't. <laughs> the point is don't. Um, well, can you maybe fry two or three eggs um, a day, but then cut then it down to twice a week twice or a week. three times Again, a week? it's not good because we are looking at the portion that is entering your body at a mm. time. So you put in so much, your body... Um, uses just a little bit of the protein, a little bit of the cholesterol to maintain your cell membranes and all that. The rest will be sitting in your body. Okay. So you take three and you said, oh, I'll eat another three after four days. The excess that is sitting in there, what is going to happen to it? It's going to be trying to settle somewhere because you'll be eating other um, glucose-based things and then your body will be working on the glucose and not burning the fat. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes when... I don't know exactly how much energy we, we need from the food that we are eating. How do we know? Apart from you know, cutting down on our portion size, how much? How do we know how much of it we are putting into us, or how much energy we actually need from them? Uh, in terms of calories, eh? Exactly. <laughs> that's what I was getting to. Yeah. Um, because you know there are certain foods that are labeled. Do you know exactly how much? So how yeah. much of it do we need, and what? In I what can't country? The figures now, but okay. you see, we need to understand this that. The little you eat that you're able to go about your normal duties is just enough. You, you realize that whenever you eat heavily in the morning, you go to work and you are dull. You feel like sleeping. sleeping. But just eat just something little. But sometimes it's not active. really about the quantity of what you eat. It's also what you're eating. You can eat something very light, but you're still very, you know, no, Unless, of course, you didn't sleep well. And mm -hmm. unless, of course, the, um, if you try to take holics in the morning, okay. you'll be in trouble, you feel okay. drowsy. So really, it's about the quantity? Yes, quantities. And and the amount of, uh, yes, basically about the quantities that you are putting in your body. If you should eat a heavy carbohydrate, um, eat, eat banku in the morning, eat kinky in the morning, you are likely because eventually, you know, when in the metabolism of these carbohydrates, some alcohol is produced from the carbohydrates you are eating. So that um, within a short time, you feel sleepy. If you should mash kinky and put it down for three days, <laughs> you know it becomes it. alcoholic. It's the same thing that we, it's digested in your system. Some amount of um, 
uh, uh, camels are produced, so you feel drowsy in no time. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's important to put in portions that are very moderate, little. I can't, I won't, I won't put figures to it, but because nobody would really see his bank class in figures written on it, right. or KG figures written on it. Just make sure that you are taking just a few slices, a few leaves here and there, a few, maybe half, half an egg. Half an egg. Oh, I'm see, if I'm if I'm eating, I'll probably take <laughs> probably have an egg. Half a boiled egg. Yeah, half, half a, boiled a fried egg. egg. Yeah, half a boiled egg or something. Even though the maximum is only once a day, I'd rather prefer to take half because if you're nutrition conscious. Rather egg on the side of caution. Yes, yes, yes. Be on the side of caution and don't just take in anything that you think that is available. So I just grab it in. I've, I've been there before, so I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Bose. This has been very interesting and very educative. I have actually learned a lot from you. Many, many thanks to Dr. Bose for joining us this morning in the studio. So you heard it all. You are what you eat. So be conscious of what you're putting into your body.